Hello, this is Dilendra. In this video, we are going to discuss about how Samudra Manthan is related to our life story. But before we do that, we will also discuss about the whole story of Samudra Manthan, which will be the first section of the video. In the second section of the video, we will try to understand the philosophical interpretations of the whole story. So before we begin that, let me ask you four questions to understand if you have the full narration of the whole story of Samudra Manthan in your head. Did you know that Rahu and Ketu are the result of Samudra Manthan? Do you know that the two goddesses, Nidra Devi and Lakshmi, is the outcome of Samudra Manthan? Do you know that there were 14 Ratnas who, which came out after the churning of Samudra Manthan? And do you know that there was a fight and cooperation at the same time between Asuras and Suras and Devas or Devatas in order to reach out to that final common goal? If you have these answers in favor of you, perhaps this video might not be too much relevant for you except for the philosophical quest of how your life is related to Samudra Manthan. So before we do that, let me begin the story how it all began. So Indra was riding his elephant called Ravat when he met sage named Durvasa. Sudvasa, out of happiness of meeting him, gave him a garland which was given as a special garland which was given to him by one of the Apsaras. So he gave it to Indra. Indra, as a token of appreciation, put it on the trunk of the elephant that is Aravat. Since the smell of the garland was so beautiful, so strong, as a result of which bees started getting attracted, annoyed by this, Aravat dropped that garland onto the floor. Seeing this, Sage Durvasa found it offending and he cursed and he cursed all the gods and Indra which bereft, which took all their strength, energy and fortune. After that, there were different wars happening between the, the Suras and the gods. Lord Indra and all the Devas lost all energy, all their strength, all their fortune. As a result of which any future war led by King Vali, the king of Ashuras, resulted in loss to all the gods. Finally, it happened so that King Vali was able to win over all the kingdoms, was now the lord of all the three Lokas. Seeing this, Indra goes back to Lord Vishnu and requests him to find a solution for them. Lord Vishnu says, because right now your all energies, all power, strength have gone for a toss, you don't have anything in your hand, so right now the only way is to wait for the opportune moment. In the meantime, what you can do is to have a cooperation, coordination with the, your enemy, so that you can survive the heat of the uh, enemy who is powerful than you. So this was a wise saying and all the lords and all the gods, all the devas and Indra all followed the advice. They all go ahead and make a reconciliation, make a amendment with Asuras. Finally, both the parties agreed to fight for a common cause or to work for a common cause and that common cause was getting the nectar getting the nectar of immortality that was called Amrita that was only going to get done after there is Samundra Manthan, the ocean of milk. So for doing that, there was a mountain which was required to be taken to the center of the ocean uh, and that mountain was known as Mandara mountain. Initially, both the Asuras and the Devas tried to carry forward that mountain but many of the Asuras and many of the Devas were either died or were injured. Seeing this, Lord Vishnu uses his mount called Garuda to shift that mountain at the center of the ocean. Once the mountain is shifted at the center of the ocean, it starts acting as one of the rods for churning, but they required a rope also. In that situation, Lord Vishnu requested Vasuki, the snake around Shiva's head, to play the role of the rope and in the process, after the result, he also will be given some share of what comes out, what comes out as nectar. So Vasuki agrees to it and he is also blessed to have a sleep so that during the process of the churning, he doesn't feel any pain. So as soon as the churning started taking place, the first thing which came out was halahal, which was the poison, which was the venom, which was giving a hard time for all the suras and all the suras and all the devas and indraloks guys. So finally, uh, it was seen that only Lord Shiva could drink it to control the ill effects of it. So Lord Shiva had to finally drink that poison, that venom. Hence, he is called Nilkantha, wherein his throat becomes blue because of the drinking of the poison. 
So this led to finding the solution for the ill effect of the venom. Later on, once the churning again starts, there are 14 ratnas which come out of which come out of it. If you have like three are in the goddess form, there where Lakshmi comes out, few apsaras come out, then you have Varuni come, comes comes out who is the goddess of wine. Now there are also some new animals like Surubi comes out, uh, then Aravat comes out, Uchayasravas also comes out which was said to be a horse with seven heads which was taken by Bali, gem which had come out, then Kalpavriksha was the that for tree which was sell, which was wish fulfilling tree which was taken by the Devas. Then Sharanga was the one which was the powerful bow which was taken by Vishnu. Chandrama Chandrika was taken by Lord Shiva. Finally, in the end, Dhanvantari comes out with the pot of immortality, with the pot of nectar. Right once Dhanvantari comes out, who was the who is said to be the physician of all the devas, he comes out, the Asuras see that and then they get hold of the pot of nectar, which is going to allow them for to live forever. On seeing this, God again go back to Vishnu, where Vishnu takes a form of Mohini and seduces them, enchants them with her moves by being a beautiful woman, by showing her charm. And in this way, all these Asuras are enamored by her and then they follow whatever whatever she is instructing. She instructs them to, for, to form two lines, two different rows of Suras and Asuras and then she will start distributing that nectar of immortality first with the devas and then with the asuras in the process it happened so that she started distributing that amrit to devas first one of the asuras got to know that this was not mohini instead it was lord vishnu so he changed his form and became took the form of a deva soon uh, sun and the moon recognized the evil being played by the asura so they inform Vishnu and who uses Sudarshan Chakra to kill and so that the body is separated from the head. The head goes on to become Rahu and the body is said to be the Ketu. The name of that Arsura who was doing this was Sarvanu. So Sarvanu was finally cut into two different part, parts of uh, Rahu and Ketu. But he had, since he had already drunk some of the nectar, of immortality so he is immortal after all the devas have taken that nectar of immortality vishnu comes into the, his original form and after seeing that asuras come to know the whole plot and then they start again fighting with the devas but right now devas have taken that nectar so hence they are more powerful and are able to defeat all the asuras along with the king bali who was defeated by indra there were other important fights also like Karki, kartikeya fought tarka indra fought bali varuna fought heti yama fought kalamba brispati fought shukra mitra fought parheti viswakarma fought maya so there were so many different devas fighting different asuras if you see the whole story of Samundra Manthan, you will recognize that Samundra Manthan was actually a problem where Samundra was sensitive or reflective of the world. Manthan is something which is our struggle, which our, is our fight. In the mythological story of Samundra Manthan, the gods had a problem that they were powerless right now after their power was taken away because of the curse. So they had to find that solution. So Samundra Manthan became the way out in order to find out that solution. And that solution was getting that nectar, that nectar of immortality, that Amrit. So in the process, first of all, they had to cooperate. They had to agree to cooperate with the demons. They had to agree to cooperate with the evil individuals, which were called Asuras. So they, they agreed to make a pact so that they can go ahead and target for the common goal which was the goal of immortality which was the getting the nectar of immortality after this happened again during the process of this getting that immortality there was operational issues wherein first of all their waste material came out which had to be taken by someone else so Riva had to come into this and rescue the lodge similarly we need to generate our own shiva in order to digest all ill effects of the endeavors which we take in order to achieve our goals and in the process it happened so that we had to fight different demons we had to take different actions we have to plan certain things so that it reaches to destination of our goal as did lord vishnu 
took that form of mohini in order to enamor those asuras if you philosophically look into the whole story of samundra manthan you will come to realize that it is your own story where you have a problem of your life of setting up a goal now you want to achieve that goal you have to be our lord vishnu to strive to find out the solution and in the process you will have to act as a role of vishnu lord shiva in order to gulp that ill effect of the whole initiative when you do that and once you have reached to the destination of getting to goal there will be others who will be fighting out again so again maybe a new process of new fight will start big uh, will start again so hope you have found out this story of correlation of how samudra mantham is related to your life story or my life story and wherein we need to be in the role of lord vishnu or lord shiva in order to first of all find out a solution and in the process also gulp down all those poisons all those venoms which are created out during the process of achieving our goals thank you for your time and patience hope it has been useful thank you